Hey, welcome back to the place where energy matters. And in this video, I'm gonna show you something I found that may give a little boost to your all-in-one system. It's Da Vinci time. So based on your questions, I wanted to see if there was a way to expand the unexpandable. Now what I mean by this, for example, is the fact that the jackeries that are currently available in the UK aren't actually expandable, so you can't actually add additional battery power to them off the bat. So after much searching on Google and then ending up on AliExpress, I found this. So this is a DC to DC booster which comes in three flavours, so you can get a 20 amp which is good for 1200 watts, you can get a 30 amp which is good for 1500 watts, and you can get the one that I've got, which is a 40 amp, which can give you up to 1800 watts of throughput. So this is really useful because what you can do is you can actually take a voltage between 10 volts and 60 volts, and then output that range between 12 and 90, as you can see on screen. So you can actually have anywhere between 40 amps input and 22 amps output. So this gives you a really good range, a flexible range to be able to charge things of all kinds of voltages. So as covered in the previous Explorer 1000 video, the standard cigarette lighter cable is good for about 73 or 74 watts, and the PWR Plus charger is good for about 93 or 94 watts in terms of charging. But I wanted to speed things up in terms of an alternative to actually having a plug-in battery, which would just expand capacity automatically. So the reason I focused on this particular option and went for the booster circuit was to try and use a DC to DC option so that I could actually exploit my case battery and actually effectively double the capacity of the Explorer 1000 in its own right. So the other advantage of doing it this way was exploiting the pass-through charging capability on the Explorer 1000. In actual fact, that's on the whole Jackery range. So what I could do is actually charge it from the case battery while still using the Explorer 1000 normally. Right, that's enough chat for now, but stick around to the end where I'm going to go over the things that I'm going to try next to get the most out of this booster circuit. So let's get on with the setup and see how we got on. So when you empty the box, this is what you're left with. So over here I've got these little posts, and these actually connect to the corners of the main board to help raise it up. And the reason for that is it's got a fan underneath that's connected to the heat sink. So you've got to give that plenty of room so it can actually suck air in and actually keep it cool. So let's have a look around the main board itself. So over here I've got the inputs here. So this is what I'm going to connect to the case battery. Up here there's additional protection offered by fuses. Down here you can actually adjust the under voltage protection. And here you can actually adjust the constant current flow there as well. I'm not going to touch these two for this particular test and setup. And up here is the important one here. And this one is the voltage regulator. This changes the voltage that comes out of the output. So that's obviously going to be connected up to the jackery. Uh, there's also a couple of little LED indicators down here. But for the full details, I'm just going to put a link in the description just to show you exactly what this main board does and all the different components and how they work. So as I've just pointed out here, you've got a fairly big heat sink because this can go up to 1800 watts of throughput power. And this obviously cuts in when this gets too warm. So let's connect it up. Right, set up and ready to go now. So as you can see, I've actually connected a couple of cables on here. So this is just an XT60 connector, and that's what I'm gonna use on the case battery itself. As you can also see as well, I've got the little legs on now, which gives that little bit of clearance that the fan would need once I finally decide what I'm gonna mount it to. I've also moved a little wire for the fan outside of the heatsink. So obviously if it ever gets warm or too warm, it doesn't do any damage to the wire. So first up, before we get going, I've just made sure that that's actually positive and negative as indicated on the main board. So I'm just going to check what voltage I've got on the case battery. Let's see what that has, because I don't think I've charged this recently. So let's see what we've got left in it. So I'm hoping you can see that. We've got 13, let's move it out of the way, 13.22 volts. All right, so. Let's hook that up. And I'm hoping you can see that now. There's a tiny little red LED that's popped on there, indicating that this is now live and ready to go. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to check the voltage at this end. And when this arrived, this was set to 52 volts. So obviously I need that a lot less to work with the Jackery's range. So let's switch this back on. And let's see what we've got at these terminals. So let's get them the right way round. 
So that's negative and that's positive. So as you can see, it's showing 23.9 volts. Right, so that's now set up, ready to go. So what I need to do now is just add some cables to the other end. Right, cables connected. And as you can see, I've actually gone for MC4 connectors for the outputs. And this gives me greater flexibility with all the cables I've got to charge a Jackery and then expand the testing out to other units as well. So effectively, this is acting like it's coming from a solar panel or an array of solar panels because I can control the voltage for the output. So what I'm going to do before I do anything else is just make sure I've got these the right way around. So this should be the positive output and this should be the negative. So I'm just going to quickly check off, and this is a really important thing to do whenever you're doing things like this, is always make sure that you're doing the checks as you go along to make sure that there's no reverse polarity problems at all. So let's have a look at that. And that's showing 23.9 volts. So that's what this is currently set to. So that is set up and ready to connect up to the Jackery. So the cable I'm going to be using for the first connection is just this MC4 connector to an eight millimeter output here, which I'm going to plug into the Jackery. And then what I'm going to do is just change the voltage settings on here to see what we can get the output up to and actually the Jackery charging directly from the case battery and what kind of watts we're going to get. Ready to go now. So let's hook up the Jackery and see what we get. So this is still set to 23.9 volts. So that's similar to the mains power brick that comes with this. So that's climbing up nicely now. Let's see where it lands. So that's staying around early 140 watts. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is, because this has a range up to 30 volts, I'm gonna turn this to see if we can get this up higher and see what it maxes out at. And I'm also gonna actually check the current that's coming through on the battery side, as in the case battery side, and then the other side once the voltage has been uh, boosted as such and see how much current is going through on the Jackery side. All right, so let's switch that on. And then let's hook that up. Let's get it the right ring round, so minus and positive. I have to try and balance my hands on this. And I'm hoping you can still see that. So let's move that forward a bit. Right, so on this, I've got to turn it clockwise to increase the voltage. So I've got to make sure I keep my eye on this. So it's now going up. So 24 points, let's go up. 24, so we're up to 25.6. So let's see what we've got on screen. And as you can see, it's actually increased to 150 watts now. So let's go a little bit higher. Let's go up to about 26. Okay, so we've gone up to 26.2, as indicated. And that's now sitting at around 156, 157 watts. So let's go, because we've got up to 30 to play with, so let's go up to 27. And no change. So it looks like we've hit the max input we can get on this. Okay, so let's dial it back down again. See where it stays at that, so that we can keep it at that voltage. So at 26.6, right, still there at the max that it's hit. Let's keep going down. Right, it's still going, it's just starting to drop. Let's go to 26. And that started to drop. So it's a few watts down now. So let's go back up to about 26.3 or 4. There we go, 26.4. And that's stabilised. Okay, so I think we've hit our voltage limit. Or the best one for this anyway. So that's 26.4 volts.
So we know the ideal voltage, which is 26.4. So let's just have a quick check at what amps are being drawn in terms of current. So starting off with the battery side, which will be drawing more than the uh, jackery side of this circuit because the voltage is being boosted. So to boost that voltage, it's going to be drawing more current on this side. Because remember, amps times volts equals watts. So let's see what we've got on the battery side. So I'm hoping that's visible, it's not too much. That's 13.92 uh, amps being drawn from the battery. So let's have a look, I'm gonna grab this cable here. And now from the uh, jackery side, it's drawing about 6.26 amps. So I'm hoping that's visible on screen at the moment. So again, it's drawing almost 14 amps on the battery side. And with the voltage being boosted, it's drawing less on the jackery side. So about 6.2 amps. Right, so I just wanted to quickly show you the Explorer 500 and what you can get in terms of charging watts on this. So it's about 105, 106 watts and I've been messing around with the uh, voltage uh, settings. So I'll show you what voltage I got to and I got to the max, which is 30 volts. So I won't go over that because that is the maximum the uh, port accepts. So there you have it, the fastest method to charge the 500. And last but not least, the Explorer 240. So let's see what voltage I've got on this. So I've got up to 24.7 volts, seems to be the optimum voltage. And that gives you around 77 watts charging. So that's the baby of the bunch sorted. So there you have it, the maximum rates I've managed to achieve on my particular Explorer 1000, Explorer 500 and Explorer 240. So this gives you some idea of how quick you could actually charge your units if you've got the same. So this is just a guide really because everyone's units might have a slight difference in them. So really stick to the voltage range on this is really important. Don't ever exceed that if you're ever trying to do this on this booster circuit or anything else. That's really important. So what's next for this little booster circuit? Well, I'm going to continue to test it just to make sure it's working okay, but so far so good. And then what I'm going to do is expand it out to some of my other portable power units. So for example, the EB150 and the AC200P, just to see what I can get out of it and what kind of battery input I need to make it happen. The other thing I'm going to do is actually directly use it with solar panels to see if I can actually improve the output voltages to get things to charge quicker. So this is going to be a bit more tricky because the UK has actually lost the sun and actually all I want for Christmas is a bit of winter sun so I can actually charge my batteries. And if you're in the UK, you'll probably know what I'm talking about right now. But this is a great little booster circuit and I think it's going to be quite flexible for what I need it to do. So I hope you found this video useful and it's not just for Jackery owners as I expand out to other portable power I have. But if you did have any comments, questions or suggestions, please pop them in the section below and I'll get to them as soon as I can. And if you did like this video, please pop a like and it does help us out. Thanks for watching and stay tuned to Dad Vinci.